So a very warm welcome to you guys. My name is Manzi Anand, and I welcome you to this series called RBI Twenty Four Seven. So guys, as you can see here, it's day number one fifty. That means another half century completed after we completed hundred days, right? So as most of you would be knowing that this is a five question series where we conduct, where we uh, discuss five questions which are based on finance and economic current affairs, and that can be of use to you. if you are preparing for competitive exams right so before moving ahead a brief introduction about your mentor so guys i have done my graduation from shri guru gobind singh college of commerce from uh, th that belongs to delhi university and after that i have done my post graduation from delhi school of economics and after that i i, I have cleared grf in commerce as well as management right so that was a brief introduction and now we will move ahead to question number 1 and before doing that i would like to do the customary thing to ask you to subscribe to our channel so guys if you are a new entrant here and you are watching our video for the very first time then don't forget to hit the subscribe button which can help you to stay in touch with us and this bell icon it can help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up right and you can also join our telegram group on this group you can ask all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible so are you ready for question number 1 so here is your question number 1 which says select the correct correct <coughs> i'm sorry select the statement which is true about gold and inflation simple question moving ahead to the solution and the solution says that the correct option is d d means this statement which says gold would act as a decent store of value when the rise in the value of gold is not less than the rate of inflation so it might seem confusing to you but let us break it down into parts and then try to understand it right first of all we have to understand the meaning of this phrase which is mentioned here in all the options store of value so guys See, whenever we purchase an asset, let's say you buy a car, or you buy some property, or you invest in jewelry or stock market, basically you are creating value for yourself. In that asset, you are deriving some value, right? So you must have heard your parents uh, talking that uh, whenever we buy a new car, its value falls down. very rapidly right because whenever you take the car out of the showroom it it its value falls down right and because it is branded as a second hand car right so uh, not a very good store of value right that asset is not storing value for a long period of time right now we are talking about gold as a store of value that whether gold can maintain its value over period of time or over a number of years or not right so i hope you understood the meaning of store of value because see when uh, with time with changing inflation rates the purchasing power of these assets because if you want to raise money out of gold or your second hand or your car you will have to sell them and when you sell them you get liquid cash right so what is going to be the purchasing power of that cash or that value that you have derived out of the asset right so that is what store of value means that whether an asset will be able to retain its value over a number of years or not right so now see what are we talking about here gold and inflation basically whenever we invest in gold so all our mothers they have gold jewelry stored at their homes sto uh, stored at homes right so they are not earning any interest on it where whereas if you would have invested that money into a fixed deposit or let's say you would have put that money into uh, some mutual funds you would be earning some reward on to it but gold does not earn you any kind of reward right so it is basically non interest bearing but the rise in value of gold is very important since it is considered as a safe haven a uh, safe asset as compared to other riskier asset which provide you with higher rewards gold has its value in this safety aspect right so we see uh, we we hear our parents talking that they used to buy gold at such low prices which has now become very expensive right so 
if the if the rise in the value of this gold asset is higher than the rate of inflation then gold is going to retain its value so if the rise in value is equal to or more than the rate of inflation then gold is going to retain its value whereas if the inflation rate is higher then it is definitely going to eat up in the value of gold right so that is why this statement is correct because it says gold is going to act as a store of value when the rise in the value of gold is not less than the rate of inflation that means it is either equal to the rate of inflation or it is more than the rate of inflation right that is why the jewelry that our parents make it retains its value its value and many a times in in any case of need of money that jewelry can be sold and money can be raised out of it right so i hope now you are clear with this question moving ahead and guys this is a very good time for raising money out of gold if you remember once we discussed that how uh, banks who was who was witnessing a fall in lending activity because no borrowers were there many people especially the retail borrowers were coming to them to raise loans against their gold jewelry right because gold is witnessing such high prices in the current times due to the outbreak of corona virus right here you can see so most of the things written here have been discussed so uh, gold prices witnessing rise and may continue to rise this is being expected by the experts leading berkshire hathaway to buy stake in one of the largest gold mining company so this is an important point guys berkshire hathaway owned by i think the most famous investor in the world warren buffet so buffet has previously criticized gold as an asset or as an investment avenue so his company investing into a gold mining company seems a bit surprising so guys uh, now here i am going to ask you to do something you have to find out which is this company in which hathaway has invested and you have to mention it in the comments right so i'll i'll be waiting for your answers after that the increased uncertainty over the past few months fallout of corona resulted in investors looking for a safe asset that can store value obviously after that lockdowns imposed in different parts of the world curtailed supply so reduced supply also led to higher prices so gold as a store of value does not bear interest as i told you directly take it does take a beating from inflation but if one purchases an instrument in the form of sovereign gold bonds so these are the instruments which have their rewards linked to the value of gold so guys if you remember we have discussed sovereign gold bonds in in one of the previous sessions right so you can ask for its link if you are not aware about this they entail an interest on the returns as well so basically they are saying here if you invest in these gold bonds then you are going to get reward not in the which you which you don't which you uh, do not get in case of buying physical gold generally gold prices have been able to preserve the reserve, real value because their value rises faster than the inflation rate and the increase in prices has offset the rising inflation right talking about other safe assets like us dollar and 10 year government securities they are also with, they are also considered as safe assets but with record low levels of yields as you know central banks all over the world are trying to push the interest rates down in order to spur their economies right so the the rate of interest are low that is why the reward on these safe assets is not very high currently one more incentive which is pushing people towards buying gold right so moving ahead to the next question for today so here is the next question which says in behavioral economics dash uses insights about mental processes of humans to change their behavior through coaxing and positive assertion rather than forcing them to make optimal choices so this talks about some concept let's see what the answer is and the answer is option a option a means nudge theory so see what is the literal meaning of this word here nudge nudge means a gentle push 
so pushing someone but not very hard just a gentle push right now what is its meaning in in terms of economics so nudge theory says that whenever you want to change someone's behavior you do not force good behavior upon them so you should not force them to do something you should not force someone to make a good decision or an optimal choice but you should try to take certain steps or make the environment around them more conducive more positive so that they themselves take the right decision right so uh, if this sounds confusing to you let's take an example let's say there is a little child at your home and you want that child to clean his or her room right now see if you are going to scold the child and uh, tell her to clean the room she might not do it or she might not want to do it right but if you engage that child in some sort of game in some sort of play and then ask her to clean the room she might do it very happily right so making the environment more positive so that the person wants to make the optimal choice that is the part of nudge theory right so one example if we talk about in public policy can be uh, governments providing incentive to citizens if they pay taxes so basically government is not penalizing people on not paying taxes or they are not being strict but they are saying if you pay your taxes on uh, duly on time we are going to provide you with some incentive let's say if there is a company uh, which sets up a there is a company which pay taxes on time that company might get some credit availability or some raise in the credit worthiness which might be useful for that company so basically incentive so this is not putting hands into the pocket of the company and then dragging money out of it similar incentives can be provided to citizens also that if they pay their taxes on time they are going to have some benefits right so not imposing good habit so we always hear our parents saying that we should not impose good habits on children but make them understand why they are good for them similar is the concept of nudge theory that you provide a gentle push and leave the choice to the person right so we are going to discuss some more examples as you can see here uh, richard taylor the father of nudge theory backed the nobel prize in economics for it see one example here that i i'm remembering that i read somewhere was in spain and it was in relation to organ donation so basically gov government sp spanish government wanted people to donate more organs after their death right so what they did was they made it mandatory that by birth everyone is going to be an organ donor but you have the choice if you don't want to be a donor then you can opt out of it opt out of it right so this is an opt out system usually what we practice is that if you want to be an organ donor you will have to register yourself so it is an opt in system but here everyone was made a donor mandatorily uh, by providing a choice to them but now many people might not opt out of it because they just don't care or they are too lazy to do it right so this makes this covers most of the people or this covers a, a larger base in terms of organ donation right and this can also be used in terms of pushing people into saving for retirement so if there is a company that wants to push its employees to save for retiring to save for retirement many employees might not do it so they might understand the value of it but they are just too lazy to uh, look for it research for it or uh, uh, wanting to invest in it right but if it is made mandatory that every employee of this particular company is going to be part of this particular retirement plan and if they don't want they can opt out of it so many employees might not want to opt out of it right so or they are just too lazy to opt out that is why they are just happy with the status quo right so this is uh, an example of nudge theory how it can be used 
to affect the behavior of people and pushing them into making optimal choices right here you can see the information aims to influence the choices but without taking away the power to choose as i told you in case of spain and in this example of retirement that they have the choice they have the choice to opt out if they want to so nudges are beneficial as we don't always think and decide logically so nudges help people to practice rational behavior which humans might not uh, every time practice because they they are affected by their emotions feelings and other factors right weighing up all of the costs and benefits actually majority of our decisions are made instinctively and unconsciously so most of the decisions made by humans are really impulsive and not very thought about so humans being not so rational often need encouragement or intervention or a nudge to get going and do what's best for the country or society at large concept is relative relatively subtle policy so the nudges have to be subtle they don't have to be a very big step or a very evident step right so they have to be subtle policy shifts that encourages people to make decisions that are in broad self interest not about penalizing people financially if they don't act in a certain way way it's about making it easier for them to make a certain decision or to indulge into some good behavior right moving ahead to the next question here is the third question which says recently central government has come up with certain steps for boosting demand in the economy from the below mentioned options select the one which is not a part of these steps which which are undertaken moving ahead to the solution very simple question and the option and the correct option is option b so option b is the incorrect one the correct one is rupees 28000 through ltc 8000 through festival advance scheme 12000 crore interest free loans through state and 25000 in through capital expenditure so guys see these op the um, see um, these schemes ltc scheme and festival advance scheme this has been discussed in detail by manish sir so if you're not aware of these schemes you can watch that session uh, let's not waste time here discussing them in detail right so guys see this option of ltc scheme where people are being incentivized to spend their ltc amount and after that here also they are being provided with some money so that they spend on festivals right so this these can also be considered as a nudge which is which 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 is going to incentivize people to spend right so you can say that uh, government is trying to practice nudge theory here to increase demand or boost demand in the economy right here you can see so the total plan is of 73 so total plan is of 73000 crore and here you can see it's break up so first of all which is being provided by government first of all 12000 crore as interest free loans to state so you know states are uh, in financial crunch and they are not able to raise revenue because of the covid reduced lockdown after that 25000 that government is saying that they are going to spend on capital infrastructure capital expenditure or they are going to build infrastructure or they are going to spend money into activities which will generate employment right so helping states and capital expenditure after that 28000 crore for ltc voucher scheme 8000 crore for festival advance scheme and these spendings have to be done by e mode or electronic mode so that digital payments are boosted in india and what is going to be the impact of these steps demand generation and also a boost to e commerce and digital modes of payment higher capital expenditure will generate employment and in turn generating more demand right so these are some steps take undertaken by government so guys uh, these are not get see they, these are getting mixed response some experts are saying that these are very good steps which have been undertaken but some are saying that these are not enough to generate demand as 
money provided into schemes like LDC and festival advance scheme, they are not enough and government needs to do a lot more, right? So these are some opinions by experts. Moving ahead to question number four. Here you can see question number four, which says Mr. Kabir Thapar is a newbie in the world of securities trading. He is looking to work with a broker who can execute trades for him, also provide investment advice. So what he does is he asks his friend Naina Talwar, who is an active trader, to provide him the contact of her own broker. So she has a broker, she is an active trader and Thapar asks her to provide the contact of her own broker. But Naina tells him that she avails the services of a dash to execute her trades, whereas Mr. Thapar should go for a dash. So these are your options. Moving ahead to the correct option and the correct option is option E. Option E means discount broker and full service broker. So Nana avails the services of a discount broker whereas Thapar should go for a full service broker. Now what is the difference between the two? Let's see in the solution. So I think it's easy to guess by name discount brokers and full service brokers. See, full service brokers, as the name tells you, they are going to provide their clients with full service, including research facilities and consultancy facilities. As you can see here, provides its client with a wide range of financial services, research and advice. Right? Additional services can include portfolio analysis, portfolio construction. So they help their clients into uh, constructing a portfolio or creating a portfolio. After that, estate planning, planning their wealth for them, providing taxation advice, access to IPO shares and to foreign markets. Right. So that is why they are known as full service broker. After that, coming to discount broker. So a discount broker does the job of executing the trade, but does not provide any sort of consultancy facilities, right? So does not provide investment advice or perform analysis on a client's behalf, unlike a full service brokers, just carries out trade and buy sales order at reduced commission. Now, what is the benefit of this going for a discount broker? So discount broker, they charge lesser commission as compared to a full service broker because they are providing lesser services. Right. So if there is an active trader who just needs someone to do uh, to uh, execute trades for them, then that person should go for a, a discount broker. Whereas someone like Kabir Thapar who needs uh, investment advice should go for a full service broker. Right. Discount brokers offer lower fees. They do not spend money closing deals with high net worth individuals. Plus most of them operate online resulting in low overhead. So this discount brokerage business in India is getting popular, right? And guys see, recently as we have discussed many times, uh, we have discussed in the concept of Robinhood trading that in uh, after the outbreak of coronavirus, people have taken a keen interest in investing directly into stock market without uh, having the advice of anyone, right? So uh, this this trend has led to the popularity of discount brokers because people now need someone to execute their trade at a lower cost. They do not need advice, right? So, uh, people who want or traders who want to invest into markets themselves at their own discretion. That is why this trend is getting popular, right? So recently there was a company, a discount brokerage India, Indian discount brokerage company which has been funded by Tiger Global Management, right? Uh, and it is a very huge company. So let's see who can answer this correctly and who can mention the name of this particular company which has been funded by Tigers. Let's see who gets the correct answer. So guys, do research about it. Uh, you are easily going to find it in Live Mint and do mention it in the comments. Moving ahead to last question for today. So here is the last question which says, in a bid to improve its functioning, Reserve Bank has decided to move to NGTA, that is Next Generation Treasury Application. So three statements which are provided to you about this NGTA and you have to select the correct ones. Let's see what the correct answer is. 
so guys you can pause the video and you can check out the statements and then decide with your answer so the correct option is option c option c means 2 and 3 that means statement 2 is correct statement 3 is correct right so there is one word missing the main aim of ngta right so the main aim of NGTA is to manage bond purchases by uh, bond purchases and sales by RBI. No, it is to manage foreign exchange reserves, forex reserves, and gold reserves by RBI. So RBI needs an application so that they can manage foreign exchange reserves and the gold reserves. So this is the correct statement. So to manage this, they need an application which is called NGTA National Next Generation Treasury application and RBI is inviting bids uh, from vendors who can develop this app for them which is going to help them into managing their reserves and anyone who wants to bid for being, an, being a vendor here they so prime bidder for providing this application should have a minimum annual turnover of at least 475 crores in these three years then only they can bid for it after that ngta according to rbi is going to be a web-based application providing scalability maneuverability and flexibility so scalability means they should be app, uh, the, this app should be able to handle a lot of transactions or uh, transactions on a larger scale so maneuverability means it should not be rigid should be should be able to be it, it should be uh, able to get steered into different directions that means it should not be rigid with its interface and it should be flexible enough to introduce new products and securities besides supporting a multi currency transactions and settlement right so these are the correct statements some more information about it here you can see ngta for which rbi has invited bids from eligible vendors they are going to be focused on assets classes like fixed income products forex reserves money market and gold so these are some assets that rbi maintains system will deal in various assets classes and perform functions like portfolio management workflow management reserve management integration with third various third parties and in house systems right after that, proposed NGTA should automatically fetch all the relevant details of a security from a trading platform. That means the information about securities which this app is handling, it should be able to fetch the real-time details or the current details about the securities from the trading platform. And as far as gold is considered, NGTA should support sale, purchase and deposit of gold. Right? So these were the five questions for today. Guys, I hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, then don't forget to give us a thumbs up. So before ending this session, I would like to discuss an article briefly, which was asked by Tulsi in the comments. So Tulsi wanted me to discuss an article called Wrong Target from Economics Times Magazine. So this article is called Wrong Target. And it talks about inflation targeting so Tulsi this article it is basically saying that inflation is not the only factor which MPC or the monetary policy commission has to cater to or has to handle there are many other factors like interest rates growth which the central bank has to look at so basically they are saying that this is high time and we should move ahead from just saying that we are just this that mpc is just for managing inflation well uh, where whereas they are looking at many other aspects right so you can see how they have mentioned global financial crisis so they are saying that although this inflation targeting the, this was recommended after this crisis happened to prevent such situations but there are other factors to look at right so central banks they have always performed the job of looking at many factors simultaneously that is why so basically this the writer here tk arun wants to say that in my opinion tk arun wants to say that that 
here is double double speaking so he refers to this concept of double speak double speak means that we are speaking something and doing something else so basically kehna kuch aur karna kuch is known as double speaking so he is saying that don't just say that mpc is for inflation targeting where where mpc is going to handle and they have to handle a lot of perspectives such as growth and uh, growth stability of the economy and not only monetary policy is important apart from that fiscal policy other fiscal regulations they and monetary policy they should go hand in hand if we want to stabilize the economy right so briefly this is what the article says i hope now you have got some idea and i hope if you will reread it you will get a better idea what this article is saying right and do remember one thing editorials are obviously uh, editorials are always open to interpretations because what the writer wants to say and what the audience perceive is different from person to person right so guys i'll see you in the next session and till then take care of your health take care of your health keep your studies going on and i'll see you in the next session thank you for being here